It was gnarly. Like he was rolling. <laughs> and like we were coming up to this one like dip down and mentally I'm like, we're about to bottom out. So I braced for impact because I've got a bad back. So I'm like, uh, I did this and, and it, the truck just floated through a cloud. We launched off this jump and was still hauling ass. What do you, what do you What's up, everybody? My name's CJ Face, and welcome back to the podcast on the second channel here on the vlog channel. Looking for the main channel that is linked down in the description. And uh, today, it's just Chris Baird and I. We're uh, <clears throat> we're shooting a podcast for whatever reason. We're back on the uh, podcast grind. We have been so freaking busy that we've not had the chance to film one. But we got some cool stuff that we've been working on. Um, some really cool stuff that you and I are not only involved in, but involved in together on um, probably one of the craziest ventures that I've personally ever gone on. And you all, if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or anything, you all have probably seen some of the behind the scenes uh, pictures and some video and stuff like that. And maybe even a vlog before this or after this would come out. But um, we're going trophy truck racing, which is insane. <laughs> Us of all people. <laughs> Are they sure? I don't know. Like I question Jonathan and Jordan's uh, uh, you know, choice to let us drive and you know navigate this trophy truck. But um, hey, I mean, I, th I I do think that if you know I was wildly out of control and just not built for it, then I, I think that would be completely different. But uh, you know, meeting Jonathan and Jordan Brenthal, they own Brenthal Industries, Baja Kits, all of you be of. Well, all the all of the above. I can't even talk this morning, but um, yeah, they're they're great, great people. I actually have the Baja Kit shirt on today, there, Chris. So yeah, check that, man. So uh, anyway, we're we're racing uh, trophy trucks. Our first race is December first through the fourth, and that is going to be with the Legacy Off Road Series, and then our big, I would call it debut, like our the big one, the is, big one, the big Kahuna <laughs> is the Mint Four Hundred in March and that is going to be in Prim Nevada and there could not be a more exciting thing that I've ever looked forward to in my entire life other than this. This is it. Like I, I what do you race after this that is cooler and and better than a trophy truck? Like F16s maybe? I don't know, we joined the military. Like how else do you <laughs> I'm not joining the military. I'm just saying what else could you do? Like this is the craziest racing in the world. It is. And I want to jump into this. You know, I I'm going to get so much hate from the dirt track circle track world from Ooh. this. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. And, and this is not me saying like, um, Oh, I'm better. Cause I'm racing trophy trucks. No, I just, I want a challenge to myself. Like, and, and that's what this is about. I want to challenge my driving abilities and continue to do that. I, it's whenever I start winning in something, it's like, all right, well, why do you want to just keep, beating a dead horse, especially when you don't do it for a living. If That's you do true. it for a living, like a Donnie shots or somebody like that in sprint cars, that makes sense. It does. And how long, how long did it take you to get a win with sprint cars? Like you worked a few years up to that, right? Yeah. It took me three and a half years. So now it's like, all right, cool. Check that off and let's just keep rolling. Cause yep. you can race a sprint car whenever you want, but it, yeah, I can. And I still will. And I think a lot of people are going to be like, CJ, what's your plans for 2023? And that's what we're going to discuss here today on the podcast. But I'm going to get to this really quick. Cause I, this is going to ruffle circle track guys feathers. And it would probably ruffle mine too, if I wasn't the one driving, but I have to yeah. say this driving a trophy truck takes more talent in focus than anything I've ever raced because I know, let's say I'm, all right, I'm going to use Bridgeport for instance. We run really good at Bridgeport, right? Or Dixieland. Dixieland's yeah. a prime example to where the track is flat. It may have a rut. And I'm telling you right now, <laughs> I will, <laughs> I will never bitch about a rut at a dirt track ever again. You can't. You, you can't after not. what we experienced going training out in the desert, like you just get shit whipped in this thing. Like you're getting tossed all around the seat. I mean, like it takes abuse on your body. Those, and um, the ruts on a on a trophy truck course are this tall. Yeah, this tall. Your forty inch tires are going through these ruts. So yep. And you they know, have all the modified guys at Bridgeport. <laughs> oh, it's bumpy. Get the. F out of you. you don't even know what a bump is. That, <laughs> no, 
fucking <laughs> the trophy truck wouldn't even budge to the worst race conditions ever. Like <laughs> I tell you what, you know oh when God. like they cut the track up, you know the dirt track or whatever. Yeah. The trophy truck would go around there and it wouldn't feel a, a damn thing. It'd be like riding on a no. flat surface. It would it would probably bust your teeth out of your skull with, you know, a sprint car or a modified. I get that. But like they're like, Oh, the track's rough. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you don't have a f- clue what rough is. I didn't. Oh, I used to God. bitching. I I was one of the people I would complain. Oh, the track's rough. There's a f- river out back with some f- <laughs> water down. <laughs> I've said that too. And um I mean, but I mean ultimately, it's just a different style of racing and I truly believe that it takes an immense more amount of focus to run a trophy truck and the the talent of reading the course. Yeah. Maybe maybe give a breakdown. People might not even know what this means. <clears throat> so, you're not on a necessary like track. You know what I mean? You're on a 400 mile trek across the desert. And with that being said, um, usually it is like a big loop and you do it two or three times. And usually the loops are anywhere from a hundred to 200 miles. And now if you go around the Baja, that's straight down, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. So for instance, the, um, the race that we're going to race the mint 400 and the legacy race in December that we're going to be racing in mm-hmm. that there is one big loop. It's 125 miles per loop. And I mean, just because we came back on the same loop in 125 miles from now does not mean that that rut is the same size. Every time, when you have 400 trucks rutting up through the same rut, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. So what I mean by like, it takes like a special talent to navigate. I'm not even saying I have that talent. I'm going to have to develop the ability to drive that, yep. not the talent because talent comes natural. And, and I've never raced these things. So I don't know if I have natural talent at this or not, but I'm telling you, when you're going through those ruts and the truck gets upset, yeah, most people would not know how. Like in my mind, I've I've raced um, just about everything you can in circle track, right? Yeah, I've had side by sides. I've had four wheelers. I know how ruts feel, yeah. but it is nothing compared to this trophy truck, dude. Way different because you just way different. Put the truck in there and hammer down. There's no slowing down. There's no checking up. No, you you got to literally like put your sack in the truck first and then get in after. I mean, and, and really, really, because I mean, you're, you're sometimes going anywhere from, you know, probably a minimum of 70 miles an hour up to 130 at all given times. So you're just getting tossed around the truck and you have to navigate the terrain better than the next guy, or you got to navigate the terrain enough to not kill me and you. Yeah. It's a two person job. You know, it's just, yeah, you couldn't do this by yourself safely or no. efficiently. No. You know? And that's one of the things that maybe you all don't realize either. Chris, when we say he's co-driving, he is the navigator. Yeah. He's letting me know there's an L1 into a right four over crest into a L2 and then a straight. That probably sounds like a complete Spanish or a different language to most people. But to us, it makes sense now. And, and before it didn't, like yeah. I, I could honestly sit here and tell you, I was like, I had no clue what any of that meant. No, it was Zero. Hard, it was hard to pick up. Yeah, when you hear it, it sounds like a foreign language. But that knowing that and knowing what the the course looks like on a GPS, so I can relay that to you, is just as important as you driving the truck, slowing down for these dips, not killing us essentially. Yeah, because I'm relying on your directions to be good enough to me, knowing that I can charge this corner, mm-hmm. and not only that, I can charge the corner, but like I'm not killing you because you're not trying to kill us. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And in one wrong mistake, and, and I told Chris this too. I like before we got into this, you know, we got the opportunity of a Brentho, and I'm, I'm, I went to him. I'm like, hey, do you want to navigate? Because there's not very many like good navigators out there. They're already already taken up. So I'm like, yeah. let's get you into training and and let's go off to the races. So yeah. that's essentially what we're doing with all this, right? And I told Chris, I'm like, this is important. I'm like, you could kill us both. <laughs> we no looking out and watching the birds fly around the desert. You know? Yeah. Well, like I told Chris too, I'm like, if you, if you were seriously to look away for more than two seconds, yeah. it could be the, the definition of us being upside down versus continuing on. Absolutely. It, Is it stressful it knowing that like, okay, we're driving a half of a million dollar, $500,000 trophy truck and you are in charge of navigation so a crazy guy like me behind the wheel can take us through the desert. There's a little pressure there. A little stress. Just a little. No, honestly. I'd be I, stressed the fuck out. <laughs> I, I was going into it before I sat in the truck but now that I know what I'm doing and then we get to sit with Erica Sachs who is an incredible navigator one of the best in Damn the whole right off-road racing industry. She 
Um, very well known. Very well known. She gave us four or five hours of her day last week to, it was last minute, gave us a course. And we did a couple of days in the truck. I truly feel confident that we can be competitive in this. I really do. I do too. I, I think um, it's like anything, track time is super essential. Yeah. But also, where uh, we, we live on the East Coast. So we yeah. got to like travel <laughs> back and forth and. Uh, no desert out here to practice on. No, I, I'm seriously, if we're, I'm taking this like a whole, like a, a stride at the time to where we can go out there, practice like we were going to for the mint. Like we didn't expect to race a race in December. The no. mint 400 was going to be like our first headline. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> but now, you know, we're, we're thinking, all right, let's get our feet wet in a race. Let's see how everything goes. Let's make sure we know what the hell is going on. So in that way, it's not as uh, not as difficult for the Mint 400. Maybe we can have even a better finish. I think in, so. In, in trophy it, truck, what what is a great finish? For I mean, for me, top 20, top 15. Yeah, or to just, just finish just alone. To finish. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, we don't need to be go out, going out there and expecting to win because that's when we mess up. When yeah. We put pressure on ourselves Bingo. right away. Yeah, that's tough. It is. Especially with the attrition rate of the Mint 400, over 60% of the field crashes out of yeah. the Mint 400 because it is, this is the most prestigious off-road race ever. Really quick, if you have not joined Club Motivated, go to your app store right now. It's $9.99 a month. There's a ton of stuff. I'm not even going to list all of it, but we're having a ton of fun on there. We're doing FaceTime calls with members. We're giving out like dinners with me and you. I'm taking you all on trips. I'm doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So you're going to want to join that. Go to Club Motivated in your app store, install it, create a profile. We'll see you there. Now back to the podcast yep. in the United so States. This Absolutely. is it. It's like Baja 1000, Mint 400. They're like, yep. they're head and head. I mean, <sighs> I mean, you have a saying though, and your saying is literally the most perfect example of how we're going to race. Yeah, we're it, to finish first. First, we must finish, and yeah. that is literally it. I mean, when you have a half million dollar, I mean, trust me, I'm I'm I can't even front right now and be like, oh yeah, I'm not. I'm going to be slightly conservative just because I have a literal half of a million dollar piece of equipment underneath of me that. I'm strapping myself to, and that I'm responsible for it. I'm responsible for you. I'm responsible for me, uh, the safety. There's no Geico insurance policy on this bad boy. Hell no. It's your they, wallet. Your wallet is your insurance policy. <laughs> they wouldn't insure that shit <laughs> for the value that you pay. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Everything oh, is boy. cash. Cash, yeah. cash, cash. I, I will say this. For, for, for the driving aspect of it, I felt more. So the first day, I was like, I'm not even gonna lie. I was intimidated by it because I mean, yeah. again, I'd, I've never been in anything like this before. I don't know how this thing reacts. Well, welcome through the whole day because I was gonna ask you, but like when we from us showing up and everything, like I think that was pretty cool how that all went down. So uh, we show up, Chris and I do, and as we're driving up, uh, we meet um, Chuck Dempsey, one of the coolest guys I've ever met, great friend now, and uh, he's my driving coach and driving instructor, and and he's really taking me under his wing, and I can't thank him enough for that because there's. He'll forget more than I'll ever know about trophy trucks and off-road racing. And it's so cool to have someone like that in your corner. And essentially, that is the most important thing. He took me under his wing right off the bat. He takes me out there for a ride, <laughs> right? I, I rode in the truck first before I drove it. Yeah. We take off down the um, down into this like canyon of this desert, and he is just hauling ass. And every bump that I came up to, like I was, I asked him like, where's the handles to hold on? He's like, oh, you don't need handles. Just like put them in your seatbelt. So I'm like, got my seatbelts like this right here. And uh, we're going through the desert and, and Chuck is just ripping. Like it, it was gnarly. It was gnarly. Like he was rolling. <laughs> and like, we were coming up to this one, like dip down and mentally I'm like, we're about to bottom out. So I braced for impact cause I've got a bad back. So I'm like, uh, I did this and and it the truck just floated through a cloud. We launched off this jump and was still hauling ass. What do you, what do you feel Unreal. when you land jumps? Cuz we jumped a couple of things. How how does it feel? It doesn't hurt. It's like, weird, it, right? It feel like you expect to bottom out. Like yeah. when or it's when you and I went out there for the for the last um loop that we did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. We we were hauling ass. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, the truck's not here. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck wasn't in the truck and I was just hammered down. We were ripping. We hit this one jump. <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell that. <laughs> cuz I was it was a little uh, much. It was wild. Yeah, cuz Chuck took me for a lap before he let us go free together, me and CJ. So I I'm riding around the truck. Same thing. He's wide open, pedal to the metal. And we hit some jumps, but nothing crazy. He tells me about this one part. He's like, yeah, CJ was struggling a little bit in here, just trying to get used to a truck. Obviously, it's a whole new thing. 
And I, I remembered that when we went around the next time with CJ. So I'm like, all right, whatever. He's going to slow down here, whatever. CJ fucking gets on the gas, ramps it up, <laughs> launches off of this hill. We had to have been 10 to 15 feet in the air. We're just whoosh. And we looked over at each other. And we're like, oh, f-. <laughs> we landed perfect. He didn't feel a thing. We just kept going. Yep. <laughs> While we were in the air, I was like, it's already over. We didn't even do a lap, and it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous. But, no, honestly, it was it was nuts. He, he's honestly really good already, in my opinion, from riding with him. Like, the confidence is there. Like, I really truly feel we might have a chance at finishing this. I really, really think we can. And finishing is, is just like winning. For, for, like, our first time, I mean, you yeah. can't really complain with that. I mean... Absolutely not. Hell, if we roll it back into the Brenthal Industry Shop and it's still got four wheels on it, that's a win. It's in one piece. Yeah, what was most of the time, most of the people don't. They don't. No, there's they, what they say. Uh, I forgot, but the amount of people that go out there for the first race and actually finish is very low. It's like less than twenty percent. It's very, very low. It's weird. Um, I was kind of wondering, like, I like to set the scene for when we pulled up. Like, we drove an hour into the middle of the desert, nothing around us to Brenthal's test site. We're driving on this long dirt road. We look to our right and we see the trophy truck just sitting there by a camper. And it was like a kid on Christmas. <laughs> Good feeling. My heart was beating <laughs> fast. <laughs> what was it like when you were around the truck for the first time? Because I was personally blown away. But like when you first just walked around the truck, like what was that like? Because you don't really see those in person every day. Yeah. I've, I mean, if it, if those were like around us, I think it would be different. But it was, it was it's culture shock to me. It truly was. I mean, you've got a 7,000 pound beast. Yeah. Ton of horsepower. Tall. Tall. Big shocks. The shocks are almost as tall as I am. Technology um, inside of it. Just the every you little know, detail. It felt like what was a hundred switches, even though it wasn't. <laughs> you know, it was probably like twelve. But yep. you know, you have we have like identical uh switches on both sides of the truck. So if something goes wrong with my electronics, he can still start the truck, turn it off, all jack that. the truck up, all that from all of the buttons and stuff, which is nice. But mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. To to be honest with you, I don't know. I was more or less like I wanted to hurry up and get the first day done and over with. I wanted to like knock off like the whole built up thought process of what I was about to do. So there were some nerves then. So you oh, were I, I was nervous as hell. Gotcha. Like, dude, I mean, it's one thing like, okay, I, I'm, I'm glad that I couldn't, can do this, but you know, I don't want to wreck a $500,000 truck, but if I did, I I'm okay yeah, with it I kind that. of. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that makes sense. So it's like, but I don't want to do that on the first rip. No, get through but day one. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. That's normal. You, I'm, I'm gonna end up wad, wadding one up one day and yard sailing it, and it's just that's what you have to do in order to win. Like these guys push so hard. Yeah, it's tough. You get flats. <sighs> your drive shaft goes. Alternators go. Well, how about this? We don't know the race course. We, we have a GPS course. for that. That's it. Yeah. I've never been through that rut. I've never exactly. been around this corner. That was one thing Chuck actually was um, like a little nervous about as I charge the corners really hard. And oh, I think okay. that's like sprint car brain Probably. pulling into off-road brain. And you don't do that. Like off-road brain is like check up, set the truck, then get on the gas at like the apex of the corner type thing or wherever you're turning. Kind of slow down to go fast. Yeah, where I'm like, I love charging the corner. Like there was this big wall and <laughs> I charged that thing so hard. And he's like, okay, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> and I'm like, why not? It felt great. He was like another yeah. three miles an hour. We, we would have gone up and bicycled. And But again, it's sprint car mentality. I'm like, run that son of a bitch up there in that bank. You can cut down and shoot off and you don't Damn do that yes. you you run in there and then you kind of throw the truck into the corner and then go it's yeah. it's just it's take nutty. everything i'm telling you I, I think circle track racers are probably the worst people to put into these trucks yeah and okay? they, they kind of said that jonathan said yeah. that too yeah he said circle track people usually take the longest to to learn or come around about you know with trophy trucks because you take everything you've ever known, throw it out the window because you, not a single thing that I do in a sprint car or dirt track car, or even NASCAR or anything yeah. applies. And then you got a guy like Robbie Gordon, who is probably the most underrated driver of all time, like overall. Yeah, he's so good at dro- the trophy truck <sighs> stuff. That guy is scary to watch, dude. But he's like scary in control. Yeah, like if you guys get like want to have an idea of what's going on, what we're doing, like look up some Robbie Gordon videos. Like Yeah, put in Robbie Gordon trophy truck. That dude sends it, <laughs> but um, I guess uh, maybe you can explain to everybody what 
what do you like so much about this that you're already like committing to two races after only two days in the truck? Because two days in a sprint car probably is not nearly enough for you to be like, all right, I'm doing this forever kind of thing. Like you seem like you're pretty committed to this. Like you really like it. So just maybe like, what, what is it? What's drawn you to this? The, uh, the challenge of it. Like I'm not saying dirt track is not a challenge by any means. There's takes a tremendous amount of talent and effort, but there's only so much of a challenge that you're going to get at the same exact track. You know, everybody always makes fun of people who run, you know, one track and call them the one track hero. Yeah. They go anywhere else and they can't do very well. Um, I just think it's the verse I'm, I'm teaching myself more versatility than anything. And I like mm -hmm. that. I don't, I, you know, me like once I get something up and going, it's boring. Yeah, it really is. And, and I'm not saying sprint car racing is boring, but it's like, okay, we won five races this season. That was cool. Yeah. We're probably going to repeat that next season, I would imagine, if not more. I would think so, unless the equipment um, gets worse or something. Yeah, I, I mean, in, unless I just lose focus with this trophy truck deal. <laughs> Chase or something. Gets to, like tighten bolts up or something. <laughs> yeah. There's no way, you know? So, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're confident. Our sprint car program is where it needs to be. That's cool. Now, I, and for me personally, I just don't feel like staying in the dirt track realm of things is doing any good for me. I've made more connections and more friends, like solid friendships, in one week out in California when we went out there than I've made in the past 10 years of dirt track racing. Yeah. Those guys out there are a different breed, man. They they understand relationships. They understand how things work. The whole sponsorship aspect is completely different. You can barely get anybody to throw, you know, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars at a dirt car, but they'll throw that at it for one race for yeah. a trophy truck. Coverage, lots of coverage. Yeah. They understand the the you know importance of these events too. You know, it's just I think a totally the value. Animal. It's just more value out there. It is. You, you've got diehard fans, and and here's what I think really hurts dirt track racing is there's uh, we're losing dirt tracks at a a, a scary rate. Yeah, they're right. Really like are. Grandview almost sold or something, and then it didn't sell, or I don't know what happened there, but. There's a, a couple of speedways around the United States that have closed down now. And the reason mm -hmm. why they closed down is because, you know, uh, I'll say it like it is. Flow racing hurts the spectatorship of it. Yeah. And, you know, it's usually the fans that are commenting online. They're like, oh, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Like, yeah. yes, it is. Look, the grandstands <laughs> are becoming less it. full. And then they want to blame it on the track. Well, the track's dusty or less or that and other. Well, okay, I get that, whatever. I mean, just times are changing, right? And here's what's happening with off-road, in my opinion. I've been a fan of off-road racing, but I've not been, like, diehard enough to go to one. Yeah. When you go to an off-road event, it's a whole build-up. It's a big event, right? And, I, you know, some of the racers around, uh, you know, at Bridgeport, they're like, oh, we could have done this in one night and blah, 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 blah. Where those off-road fans and drivers, they eat it up. Love it. The ability to camp, the ability to like yeah. hang out and go to vendors and stuff. Like you don't see any of our vendors setting up at the racetracks, Ever. displaying product. It's only at the trade shows where mm -hmm. it's complete opposite. Off road, you got King Shocks, you got uh, Method Wheels. I mean, all of your heavy hitters are all there and they set up stuff. But also, they're yeah. selling direct to consumer people who have a side by side that go out in the desert and want to pretend they're driving the trophy truck and they want to have exactly. the same products as a Justin Lofton does or something like that. Yeah, side by sides have made that possible now because those guys, like you said, that don't have trophy trucks can, like you said, they feel like they're doing the same thing, but they can ride the same course, which is good. Yep. So I mean, that yeah, kind of helps a bit, you know. It's also different because here on the East Coast, we have nowhere to ride. We we could no. not take. We can't go ride four wheelers anywhere really around our area, at least, but. It's everywhere. Everybody just shuts down tracks and trails. The same thing with their bikes. Tracks get shut down because, oh, they make noise three hours a week. And, you know, the old people that yeah. live there don't want to hear it. Like, God forbid, people are out having fun, living their lives, you know. Or the Karen and Kyle that move in, like, right next to the racetrack and build, like, a, a you know, brand-new stick-built house. And they're like, oh, it's dusty. dusty. It's <laughs> Did you not look at Google Earth or Google Maps or, like, maybe look around before you built here, sweetheart? The you track know? was here 50 years before you were even born, so. Hate that stuff. Yeah. I, I, mean, I just think... <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, I don't think we've seen the pinnacle part of off-road racing yet. I think you see, yeah. I think we're kind of getting to like the peak of dirt track racing. I think we're maybe almost at like a plateau and we're going to ride that for a little bit. Yeah. Um, so what can you change? Nothing. I mean, 
I listen to my brother-in-law, Doug, all the time. When I'm talking to Doug about certain things, like how can he improve and how can he do this and and do this and that, I just... (sighs) Been there, done that, right? For about every every idea, just about every idea has been been had. I mean, it's just it's just dynamics, man. Just some stuff is meant to work better than others, and I think off road racing is. Um, I just think it's more fun than circle track racing. I honestly do. I I want to continue racing sprint cars. I might do it for another year or two or three or I don't know how. You might always have a car. You never know. Yeah, I might always have a car, uh, but I I can maybe not four cars. Maybe not, yeah, not four cars, but maybe a car or two cars and be done. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, Definitely. Let me get this first race under my belt and yeah, goes. we'll see how this goes because there's, I, I look at this too. We spend eight hours a day in the shop sometimes, and especially Chase. Chase bust his nuts getting all this stuff ready, right? Get the car down. For the 25 car. laps. Yeah. And then the people we race with, they bitch when you add laps. Oh, that's more laps on, on the car, <laughs> on the motor, on the tires, and all this kind of stuff. It's like you spent uh, the money to go have fun, you're, and then you're backing your your fun having up. And where I can get in one of those trucks out there with Brenthal, and uh, I'm in the truck for eight hours. Yeah. Eight hours. I'm in the truck. I, I think about this. This is kind of crazy. In one race, like a, in, in, at the Mint 400, I'll be inside that truck more in eight in in one race of the mint 400 i'll be in that truck more than i will sit in the seat of my sprint car for probably the entire season whole season in one day kind of crazy to think about that's absolutely nutty i don't know it's it's wild to think about that and i guess you know talking about the people like you said we've met so many amazing people over the past week however long we were out there it just got me thinking and it's not at everybody but you know i've been around bridgeport the whole year a lot of the drivers and the dirt car stuff really, they really seem unapproachable, which is something to me I've always found kind of weird. And then people complain about the tracks being like, I think a lot of the reason that like maybe these tracks get shut down, like you said, it's, people complain. You say that's not the reason why they get shut down that people complain, but people complain a lot about the tracks, right? All the time. Yeah. So it almost seems like the people are miserable. They don't want to be there. They're unhappy. And then whenever you try to make it better, they complain more. Like, what is it? Like, what's the stigma around the race car, like, the industry? Like, why is it like that, I guess? I'm just wondering why everyone's so unapproachable. They seem miserable. Like, because, again, you go meet someone like Chuck. Us working with Chuck's like us working with Tom Brady, trying to be good football players. Like, he's literally. a legend in the sport. And he literally went ghost hunting with us because he wanted to. <laughs> he, he was bugging us to go. Like, we yeah. wanted him to go. But, like, yeah, he's just, like, yo, are we going tonight? We're like, hell, if you're serious, yeah. we'll take you, bro. Let's go. <laughs> I just don't know why it seems like such a weird, like, it's a cool sport, like, the whole circle track stuff. But everyone seems, you guys seem like dickheads, is what I'm saying. Like, why aren't you guys more <laughs> friendly? I don't understand it. <laughs> what, what's your opinion? I, I kind of can't say that you're wrong. I don't know what the stigma is. But I think it's like, uh, it's like this, you've, I don't, I, I don't want to say any of these guys' names wrong, but all right. So there's probably only two people I know in dirt modified racing, like your, your pinnacle people, which are, um, Matt Shepard and, uh, the other guy, damn it, Stuart, um, Stuart Friesen. Gotcha. Jeez, I'm having a brain lapse here. You get guys like that, that like they're. I don't think that they're unapproachable by any sense. I think they're, uh, I think they're nice, but like they do it for a living. So I can see they're probably going to be a little bit more intense about things. Yeah. But when you walk through the pits at Bridgeport, you as a driver have to understand, like you have to be approachable yep. and, and no offense to any of them. I wouldn't sponsor any of, uh, I, I wouldn't sponsor certain ones that I've tried to, or, approach before you know what i mean or I, yeah. everybody's pretty cordial i don't want to make it sound like everyone's a dick but like it's just people don't really associate with each other but i think it's also like we're hard racing out there and you know it's yeah. it's a battle between you know i, I don't know <laughs> it's it's, you know it's weird that you said that the stigma is like that because it, it, i mean it truly is yeah like, like we met some of the most prestigious people in off-road racing this week and they were so open and friendly and I just wonder, like, are, are the people that are racing, you know, the circle track stuff, are you not out there because you love it? Like, is someone holding a gun to your head saying, hey, you <laughs> get out there and race 25 laps? Like, it almost I, seems like you that. You know, like, I go out there and race my dirt bike, and it's that the dirt bike community, in my opinion, is the exact same as the off road community because everyone's so friendly and welcoming. 
I don't know. It's just it seems weird to me. It is weird. I don't I don't even know how to like kind of go down that narrow path there, but it's almost like if you're not doing something for that person or helping that person out, they have nothing to do with you uh, when yeah. they could have everything to do with you and and get more out of it. So like just the I don't know, man. I don't know if it's like uh the cold weather just makes everybody bitter and it takes them <laughs> all summer to thaw out and then by the time they thaw out, it's time to freeze again. Yep. And like everybody out there in California is just laid back, chill. Sunny and 75 all the time. Life's good. I, it might be that, but it's weird, you know. I just I wish it was cuz you talk about this plateau and I mean, I hate to say this, I'm sorry, but if you never race sprint cars again, I would be perfectly fine with that because I love the off-road stuff. Yeah. And I just like the people we're around. It's just so much more friendly and fun and way more fun. It's yeah. You're racing in the desert, bro. Like you're and, racing. It's fun. And, and, and it. yeah. And there's no Enjoy clicks. It. Nothing. There's, there's no clicks in dirt racing. Like, you know, it <laughs> a just, lot very clicky. Yeah. The, I'm sorry, mm. but you guys know that CJ, you know, likes to hang around the women. He's got some women <laughs> hanging around his pits from time to time. And it's it's one after the other. He doesn't like the one that that you know is friends with that one, and this one doesn't like that one. But why? Why do y'all hate each other? Like, just be friends. I think be it's friends. just a, a girl thing, really. I think <laughs> they just it's like, the guys though too. It's the guys and the girls. It's everybody. There's a lot of clicks. I, I tell you this. I will tell you a story. <laughs> I think you may have heard this one. The Atlantic City. I went up there to watch the indoor races one year. I'm not sure. I don't think I heard this one. So I went up to Atlantic City one year to uh, took two of uh, my biggest customers from uh, the auction up there and. Yeah, we're, we're up there, we're hanging out, and I don't know what it is, but women naturally just kind of flock to me. Well, there was this one girl that she was surrounded by, I, I bullshit you not, at least 10 to 12 guys are around her trying to talk to her, trying to buy her a drink, and like she's really just not having any of it. And she sees me, and she's like, oh, hey, and goes through them, <laughs> comes over yeah. to me, and I, I knew about, I knew of, six of these people so half of them i kind of i knew their name but i don't know them personally i'm not friends with them and still to this day they like want to like they fucking hate me for because whatever girl reason you. i guess i don't know yeah you stole mr steeler girl <laughs> not that any of them had a chance but you know they're all upset at you for something stupid like that yeah, well it's, it's easy to also look at somebody like me you know we pull in with a big hauler we got nice equipment and shit like that and yeah it's easy to hate people who have nicer shit sometimes it is i used yeah. to be ill towards people like that too but you know, we, then then i learned just how hard it is to obtain that stuff so i do appreciate the work ethic that people who are um you know more fortunate than i am mm -hmm. to to afford that kind of stuff so it's, it's just weird the stigmas are always strange with everything you're not going to always make everybody happy you can't and i'm just looking to make myself happy with having fun racing and continuing that and just challenging myself. I think uh, yeah. to kind of come full circle for you all, I think. All right. I, I got a question for you. Okay. With what's your opinion of this off-road stuff? Like a true off the hip opinion. What, what, what's, what do you think? I love it. I love, I love the desert. I love off-road. I think I love it so much because it's so similar to the dirt bike stuff. Again, I grew up, everyone's to be in the dead horse. I, I raced dirt bikes, obviously, my whole life. But yeah, I don't have a bike right now, and I haven't ridden a lot this year. So for me, it's like getting kind of back in that seat again. Like, hey, riding down these, these bumps, yeah, hitting these ruts in the corners. You know, I'm not driving. I'm navigating. But I'm still there. I'm still a part of it. I get to break down the course with you. So I'm. it's almost like I get to get to, you know, ride it feels it's a similar feeling like the adrenaline rush i had with the truck was the greatest adrenaline rush i've ever had in my life because it was the first time i rode in the truck never felt anything like that before it was super cool uh, i think the atmosphere is cool i really got the itch now to like take two wheels and, and go out there and do a desert race like oh, yeah. i, I want to do that and you gotta I, do it i have to you know and i just can see myself i don't know if it's this year next year 10 years like moving out there like full yeah. time i could see it 100 percent because I want to be around the crowd. I love the people. I love the, the atmosphere. I love everything about off-road. And I'm excited for this challenge of being a navigator. I know this is all new, but... Well, you said it. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. And I, I truly think that I'm not jumping the gun yet, but if I am somewhat decent at this, maybe I can help other people trying to get into the sport. Yeah. Because I think Erica is kind of like one of one right now. Like, there's not really many people out there who do what she does, offer a course, I'd love to be able to help her or just help others one day with that. It'd be really yeah. cool. Well, I mean, not only that, but like you could 
navigate for other people too. Robbie like, Gordon might call me next week and be, hey, bud. Sorry, CJ. I got to go ride, try to drive you. <laughs> I'm going to put your ass under contract right now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that. But it's, yeah, one day there might be those connections, you know? Like, yeah. Maybe you and your future son, if you ever have one, are going to be out there. You teach him to navigate or something. I don't know. <laughs> I said if you ever have one. Okay. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck <laughs> up, It'd be a good moment. <laughs> a little CJ and TJ Jr. out there. <laughs> Oh no! I'm just saying that you know things might change, and maybe I can help write the book on navigation for off road. Like on a serious note, like there's there's not a book you can buy. There's no course guide for this. It's like Erica's really good at this, and she doesn't have uh, anything going on today, so she's gonna teach me how to do it. But mm-hmm. there's no real legit like school programs yet. So yeah, I I just want to be in the off road industry, no matter what it is, because it's people I like, it's people I respect, and it's. A sport that, in my opinion, is the most difficult sport in the whole world. Forget anything else. I would agree. This is what it is. It's 10 times harder than anything I've ever done circle track wise. Anything. Because you just. And and that's the thing. When I'm going down the straightaway at a dirt track, I have three options, right? If the track's wide enough. Mm -hmm. I have the middle, I have the bottom, or I have the top. And typically, we know where I run the top. I mm-hmm. cannot stand the bottom. Um, hate starting on the bottom. I'll run you up the track <clears throat> or I'll cut you off like I did Kevin Nagy after he tried to kill me going into turn three and four. Um, <laughs> I got to find that footage and put that up. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I, it, it was an asshole move from him and then it was an asshole move back from me. And Erica got mad at me, the, the, uh, one of the series owners. And I told Eric, I'm like, <laughs> well, when I had to move up a whole lane and a half because he came in so hot. I'm, I, I should have took him to the fucking scales right in the middle of the infield. I like Kevin. I think he's a great guy. I like him. But, you know, we raced really, really hard. I mean, he and, and it was lap one, lap by the one. way. You, so, you had the line. You I, were in front. I had the line. And you were we, in control. We, and if we would have hit, we both would have gone over. But, you know, also, I, before I revert back to this real quick, mm-hmm. um, I do kind of got to give a, a shout out because – over to the course of like this past year or so, like um, the Dave Brown guy in the 44. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why I called it the Dave Brown guy. guy. Dave Brown in the 44. Um, him and I would race really hard and I was never really like around him and up until like, you know, this season. Yep. We were never fast enough to be up there and up front until Chase started crew chiefing for me and that's when everything turned around. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, it was... Interesting to see how him and I's dynamic of racing each other as hard as we did. Him and I were in first and second a lot this year. I mean, I finished second to him, what, twice? He finished second to me, I think, three what? times? Two or three times. Two yeah. or three times? Um, it, that's awesome. Yeah. And and now I I know I study footage like a hawk. I know how he races. I, I know what's typical of like what he's going to do next. Mm-hmm. I know what his starts and restarts look like. I know what my starts and restarts look like. I know when he, I know if I'm start or wherever he's starting around me, I know just about what move he's going to make because mm-hmm. he is very, he's a very calculated driver and a guy like him, if you watch him race, he does not make mistakes. No. I mean, in order to beat him, you got to be on your P's and Q's because I've, I've not seen him make a mistake yet. He's a flawless sprint car driver. He is. In my opinion. He's quick. He's smooth. He's smooth. Yep. You can tell he knows what he's doing. He never there. has the car bent out of shape. He runs the fence. Yeah. He runs closer to the fence than I do sometimes. He's just pretty damn close. <laughs> <laughs> Very close. It's like a little too close for comfort. Oh, That's boy. But that was cool. Like, I, I, I wanted to give him a shout out because we, we had a yeah. good battle this year, and it was, it was really incredible to actually, uh, you know, trade sliders with him, and we raced each other with a lot of clean respect. As, as hard as we wanted to race each other, we did, but we yeah. also ended it with respect. So. Really good racing all year with you guys. Yeah. You know, he came away with five wins, I believe, right? Your whole season? Yeah, five wins for so, us, yeah. Um, what, is, what does that feel like at the end of the year? The year's over. I mean, you went into this year like there probably were some unknowns. I think you threw a lot at your program this year. Obviously, having Chase, um, you started off really rocky. First race did not go good. No. Um, but after the year's over, like maybe just reflect a little on how the season went. I think it was like one of those trying seasons where you didn't expect anything to go wrong and everything did go wrong, but it went wrong at the very beginning. And then it was like that slow build up the hill. 
Uh, I think I went into the season a little bit overconfident. We, we had that drive shaft break the first race and then we blew up a motor the second race. And then the third race we had, um, a fuel pump go bad. It was all and, and all the components are brand new. It's just weird luck. And it was meant to be where it was. So you go into, you know, my first ever sprint car win was, um, my dad's memorial race, which was a big deal for me. And it meant more to me to win that race than it did anything else. And after I won that race, I actually told my mom, I said, listen, I said, um, what do I do from here? Yeah, for real. What do you do? That's a big thing. I, do you go out on top? I won. And I almost, I told my mom, I'm like, I might just stop now and go find something else that's a challenge. And she's like, well, how about you go win more races? <laughs> All right, man. Okay. Easy. All right. That's what we did. Relax. So we went out, you know, we won uh, four more races that year and uh, capped it off at five. So it feels really good. It's a nice confidence booster going into a trophy truck. That's for sure. Even though it means zero to that Nothing. industry and yeah. my <laughs> driving habits are <laughs> need to change a ton. Yeah. I think I might struggle with that a little bit, but I also, like Chuck said, he said it's going to make you a better circle track driver because uh, you'll be able to read the track better than anybody. Bombs aren't going to mean anything to you anymore. Nope. Nothing. Even though we, you know, we you got 36 inches of travel on a trophy truck and we probably have two to three inches on a sprint car. So you still got to be smart when you're driving. But I mean, I think that you kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but, um, you know, you get that win and then it's like, okay, cool. Got the win. Now what? I think the importance is like, you know, you can apply this to everything in life. You just, the journey to get there sometimes is better than the actual end goal result. You know, that's why it's good not to set goals and just appreciate every moment because i think about all the nights that we had and the milkshake runs and <laughs> me and chase at the toter like i just <laughs> there's so many things that i can't talk about that i could talk about i just yeah i i think i would at some point buy my own trophy truck yeah. and um it might be next season i i, I truly might I, yeah. uh you know we run like the best in the desert series or we could go run legacy or score or something along those lines uh you know you got king of the hammers that's like kind of its own event there that's a really cool deal out in the desert like 125,000 people that camp out for like a two weeks straight <laughs> and it's nothing but off-roading and stuff that's the kind of stuff that i want to get into i've been looking at houses out on the west coast i i really think that's going to be a uh, next integral move for me uh as far as like continuing on the trophy truck thing, uh, you know, yeah. and to not only next season, but I, I don't know if I'll run trophy trucks full time in 2023. I might, I truly seriously might do it, but the schedule allows that for your racing. Yeah. I've, I've committed a bunch of sprint car races already, which is going to really hurt. Um, <laughs> as much as I want to go do this trophy truck stuff, but, uh, you know, 2024, I could consider myself probably full-time in a trophy truck and, yeah. um, probably maybe the same amount of sprint car races too, but just not as heavily involved as the, you know, the schedule might be. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we bring a car out to California and we do some races out there. Chase, know, pack your bags, there. buddy. We're going West <laughs> Coast, buddy. Oh man. I, just, I would still live here in Delaware too, but have a house out there that, you know. Cause good gosh, I probably spend what, when, when we go on trips, I mean, I don't, I don't stay in some cheap motel cause it, you know, a lack of sleep is, is just as worse as anything. So I, if I like to have a nice hotel, I mean, we're spending 225 dollars a night, some or on average, yeah, sometimes $300 true. a night on a hotel room because gotta have a place to stay when you're out there. You know what I mean? And we could stay with, with friends out there and stuff, but it's just, I hate impeding on people's space. I really do. Yeah. I even thought about yeah. just buying like a big motor home, putting it at like, you know, Brenthal shop or something, if they let me <laughs> keep it there. And <laughs> I think you got some options there. I think, yeah. I truly think you do. I mean, you're already talking about buying a Raptor to leave out there because we got to have a pre-runner. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, just imagine having like a community like that's out on the West coast, having that in the East coast. And you came back to be able to go, run out off it would races, be nice you know i just wish that we could get something going here because there's nothing like that not even remotely close you know there's um there's probably i think there's a hint like all right so i am very my dad paid for most of my racing career up until about six years ago yeah and then it was all on me yep everything's on me Do your own thing um it's not daddy's money paying for my racing it's CJ's money paying for his own racing. Yep, <laughs> so true. when, when you look at terms like that, there, there, I'm sure there are a lot of fathers out there that can afford to spend money to go trophy truck racing. And, you know, I'm sure Junior's going to love it. Um, but, uh, at the same time, I don't know. It's just, 
you got to travel all the way across the country to race. And I don't know if, I just don't see people from this side of the country traveling all the way over there to run a trophy truck. I think if there's something over here, I think you got something. Yeah. But there's true. nobody around here is doing anything with trophy trucks or off-road racing in okay. general. Plus, we're able to go out there and film haunted videos or skinwalker videos. We're able to kind of you know, double dip a little bit. So our trips are a little yeah. bit more than just going out there to drive. Like, we're working. Yeah. We worked our ass off this last trip, dude. <laughs> yeah, we were, we would test oh during the God. day. And then as soon as we got back, we'd get back to the hotel. Uh, we would take showers, get changed, get out there for the night, travel a couple of hours somewhere, film, travel a couple hours back to the hotel, get up early, travel an hour and a half to Johnson Valley from uh, Palm Springs. Um, it, it was, we worked, dude. There is, I will yeah. say this, you know, I, I, everybody, you know, in the whole social media space likes, you know, like pat each other on the back and, um, you know, jerk each other off and stuff about, oh yeah, you work hard and shit, but like, damn dude, we work our dick in the dirt. We really do. We do. And that's not us being pompous. Like I can truly say from the time that we wake up until the time that we fall asleep, there's no fuck around time. Like we don't go out to lunch with, uh, you know, girlfriends and we don't go out and, and party <laughs> and, and take our dogs for a walk or anything crazy you know like my poor dogs i mean I, that's why i want to get a house out there i can take them and i stay for a month and i can see them more often and stuff yeah. so i keep thinking about <laughs> uh we we were so like everyone's talking about Dahmer, and we're like we need to watch this Dahmer show <laughs> we were watching it at like one o'clock in the morning every night we'd get through like an episode and a half we both yep. be zonked out on, on our couches <laughs> We, it took us like four weeks to finish Dahmer because we, whenever we had time, it was like two in the morning. Like, yeah. One episode. Come on, do one episode. We, we had to watch this thing because it was like trending on Twitter. So we're like, fuck it, we'll watch it, right? Yeah. So Chris is all the way across the other side of the living room on a couch. And he, and this is Chris. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> after midnight, I am out. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, you, you struggle after midnight. I thought you were going to kill us coming back that one night. I was like, Jesus, he was all over the road. I'm like, you need me to drive? He's like, it's like 20 more minutes. It's like, oh, good. I'm like, if you kill us, I'm going to f*** you, dude. No, as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, shit, you're right. I am swerving a little bit. I'm good. I'm good. We're good. Everything's fine. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you, after midnight, I should not be behind the driver's seat. I shouldn't be doing anything that requires attention. It's not for me. I think the Mint 400 is going to be interesting because we have to drive at night. Well, it's not it goes from day into night. Yeah. I know, and it's me driving, so I mean, we'll be all right. But that's true. That's true. Knock on that's wood. Be a wild, wild lap. An hour, what? Hour and a half? Two hours in the in the yeah, dark. In the dark. Pitch black. Yeah, I think it's around two hours in the dark. Whew. That's I just, rough. I just hope that people. I guess for me personally, like, I think it's a lot harder to get into circle track racing where the desert stuff is super cool because you guys really can kind of get a taste of it. Like if you can jump mm -hmm. in someone side by side or get on a four wheeler and rip around. So hopefully people find interest in this and we hope you watch the race. We hope you guys check out, see what we're doing. Cause this is super cool and absolutely so many levels and we're going to do everything we can to get you guys involved in this as much as you want to be. Honestly. Yeah. So, so we're, we're, what we're doing is we're actually going to, if you have not joined club motivated, it's uh, it's an app that we created. It's a way that you can get involved with us way more. This is kind of a shameless plug for that. But if you want to win a trip to the mint 400 or you want to win tickets to the mint 400, we are doing a massive cross promotion with not only the mint 400, but the owner of the mint 400 is willing to do a lot of cool stuff. So, we have not come out with a press release of an official one or anything like that. But when we do, it's going to be game on throttle down. Social media is going to be flooded with the mint 400 CJ Faison and Chris Baird. So go join club motivated. It's $9.99 a month. There's three giveaways every single week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can have the chance to win something. We post all of our cool behind the scenes shit there. We were stuck the other night and I posted on Club Motivated instead of worrying about getting unstuck with this stupid ass Ford expedition that we rented. I was like, what are you doing, bro? We did get unstuck. He's like, oh, I'm a video it's a, two, it's a two wheel drive expedition that we rented and it, you know, it, was, it is what it is. We won't get into that. But, uh, yeah, there's some really cool stuff on there. So you could be selected to go to the Mint 400. Maybe you live in Australia. Listen, if you get randomly selected. I'm buying you a plane ticket from Australia, taking care of your plane, your room, your, I mean, your whole travel expense. I'm taking care of that with Club Motivated. So go join that. Doesn't matter where you're from. And uh, Chris, I don't know if there's really much more that we can say about this off-road stuff other than that. Like, 
there's just travel the, stories. There's haunted videos. There's stories for everything. Uh, but the trophy truck stuff, I think we got it pretty covered. Yeah, Let, let's 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 finish this off with like a funny story. What what's a story that you would want to tell, or that you want me to tell? That you what's a story you think the audience deserves to hear? Go f- uh, yourself. <laughs> see it in your eye. <laughs> You could talk about Slab City. You could talk about the doctor. You could talk about karaoke night at Slab City. <laughs> Any of that stuff to me was just <laughs> so interesting. <laughs> the sex therapist, <laughs> the, the the Tower of Enlightenment. My friends think I need a sex therapist for some reason. <laughs> <She's> Shoe strings. <laughs> God, I can't wait till we open up like a an after dark podcast. I really can't. There's there are so many stories. What do you all think about this? So hang on a second. You just uh, you this would have to be behind a paywall. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it would have to be behind a paywall. But go ahead. What if we put that? What if we put the after dark uh podcast on Club Motivated? I, I'm. I think. I think there's there's going to be a lot of planning, but I think we could do it. <laughs> I unfortunately have um, some, you know, you you always have like that one friend that he's got like some wild stories. It's him. It's him. (laughs) He's the wild one of the stories. I get like the most insane shit to happen to me. Everywhere. Not by choice, but just by design. It's everywhere. It doesn't matter. I just, I I think I I can't even talk about the things I want to talk about right now. Just like married women inviting us to go get drinks <laughs> constantly. <laughs> like, I just don't understand it. It wouldn't happen unless he was involved. We declined, by the way. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did decline, actually. Yeah. Right to her, I was like, oh, well, I appreciate the offer. I was like, I don't think your husband would think too highly of that. But, um, yeah, you just got married. Are you sure you don't want to go home and see him? Like, maybe watch a movie or something? <laughs> you want to go get drinks with us? Got married like two weeks ago and you want to go have drinks with us? Like, oh. I don't think it's a great idea there. Yeah, I don't know. I think if we got Chase up in here, I think we could have some fun with this. This would be a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we could finally explain what a milkshake run is. <laughs> Ooh, boy. So yeah, make sure you guys let us know if you want that. Give, give us some input in the comments if you want an After Dark podcast. It would be very, very, very sexual. But <laughs> This is all the good stuff. I'm telling you, it's juicy. No pun intended. <laughs> It's all it's you, mother. It's you. We're just innocent bystanders. All right. Well, we're going to log off here. I'm going to go find a therapist. We'll see you on the next one.